Welcome back to All the Crackers in the Box. Wow, I'm halfway through my corner to corner. My two panels are done and I just started the other one. My hands are a little sore, so we are going to do some hand sewing and finally finish up this mitten. So glad you're here to join me today. Hi! I should have a photo of my panel because it's too large for me to record and it's too late to have good lighting but a good quick flash is acceptable. I'm just going to take these out. So Leonardo is done. I have Michelangelo the orange and Leonardo the blue are finished. So I only have Donatello the purple and Raphael the red. And I decided to start with Donatello. I will go over my color choices on this a little later. I just want to get this started so I can get this off my to-do list. And right now, once I'm done this, I have my corner to corner and just my shawl on, on deck right now. It's crazy. I only have two whips at the moment. So I have been working a lot more of my diamond art which isn't very popular or anything and I just really enjoy it. So maybe I'll show what I've been working on. I have a lovely diamond art of Rapunzel that I'm doing for my daughter because it's her favorite Disney princess and it's the nice shot of Rapunzel with her hair all done up with the flowers and she's looking at all the lanterns on her birthday that's one of my daughter's favorite parts of the movie so I'm doing that up for her that's a nice picture for her because she is my little Rapunzel she used to have very very long hair and lately she's gotten a little bit shorter it's very cute either way but she absolutely loves Rapunzel which is fun wonderful Rapunzel is quirky cute and pretty mean with that uh, frying pan. What more could a mother ask for? Okay. Let me see here how this is looking. I want them to sort of match up. So I'm going to need to get a little more ticky tucky. Sorry, I've been playing with my three-year-old all day. We were playing feasts with all her kitchen foods and the little metal kitchen set that, of dishes I got her from Timu for Christmas. Some of my prizes. When they didn't have my knitting machine, so that's what I chose instead. No regrets. I love the knitting machine, but these little meals I've been having with her have been absolutely wonderful little feasts and picnics, and she's making me fabulous sandwiches out of my crochet sandwich sets that I made her. Tomorrow I'm going to have lettuce on it because we found one of the pieces of lettuce because uh, her food pieces have traveled all over the house. And that was a lovely way to spend the day. Spreading out all her eggs and her little hot plate and her little kitchen. And she got her sister to pretend to wash her hands in her sink in the kitchen. It was pretty funny. She just really enjoyed sharing a meal. Oh, and she made me green tea. I thought that was super adorable because I absolutely love green tea. And... So, I guess she's been paying attention. Making mom the green tea. Alright, so. so. 
homage that through here, through there. I don't need it to be perfect. I do kind of want to camouflage that weird little line. But if I don't, it will still be a lovely pair of mittens. Ow, that was my knuckle, thank you. If you heard that, my knuckle just cracked. That's why I'm not really doing much crochet because I really, I went through quite a few rows of the corner to corner this morning because I want to keep on track. And my hands aren't crazy about me right now and we're about to go through a crazy cold snap for next week and hopefully, hopefully finally get some snow around here. Because my worry, just like every other year, is not enough snow means good chance of a drought. And drought is very, very real in this area. And being that we're very fire prone, we definitely do not want it to be drier than it has to be. So here's hoping that there's 2024 is going to be a very wet and mild year. But I doubt it. Oh my goodness. Alright, so that should do it. I'm just going to run that through and then back once the other way. Just to make sure what, my knot doesn't come out loose. Like a thundercat. So hopefully everybody's having a nice beginning of their year. We are back to school on Monday, so back to school. Trainings commenced for sleep schedules and whatnot. Okay. Now, where, where did my thumb go? Ah, here's the thummy. We are going to take that, put that to the side. Now, twist that, pull it through. Now, let's see here. We are going to have to turn it the other way, I think, because I don't want to turn the thumb inside out. Wait, did I tuck that in? No, I didn't. I do have to turn it inside out. Okay, let's do this before we're attached. Really tight. Really tight. Okay, we're going to tuck our strings, because, I mean, how much fun would that be to wear these mittens and have them be very stringy like that? And done. Oh, I do have another project. What was I thinking? I have that fold-up market bag I've been working on, which I will show in a little bit here. And I forgot. I've been I've been trucking on that one, but I gave it, put it down so I could finish this corner to corner. And that's all I've been thinking about. But I want to get these mittens. I'm gone, gone, gone. Market bag, I probably will be able to get done within the next three or four days if I work on it. It's a simple mash. It's just chaining and attaching them every 10 to 15. I think I'm going to switch it to 10. I don't really like how big 15 is. I don't want it to be a giant market bag. I just needed a little something for like... A small amount of fruit at the farmer's market kind of thing. I don't need it to be four jugs of milk big. I don't know if I'd actually trust one of them to hold four jugs of milk. And I mean, again, it kind of depends on the size of the milk, I guess. Alright, that should be good for that. So now it's inside out. I could actually turn that back inside out. So all my stitches are on the inside like they should be. So... Let's just do that. And I hear just whiplash watching me do this, right? She's switching it again. Ah, my brain. Okay. I do have to close this piece here. Isn't a big deal. Now, what I want to do... we're going to want to pop that to there to there 
Okay, so... <laughs> Twist. And load. There we are. Okay, so we're going to... Start over here. We're going to leave you on the outside. Start attaching our pieces together. Honestly, there's probably a million ways to do this. It's a lot easier than what I'm doing. So please don't use me as like an example because I've never done this before. And the last one I did slip stitching and the slip stitching kept coming out. So I'm just going to sew it is what I've decided to do. And that's a okay. Go around. I think I kind of like it better sewed, anyways, so I probably should have done that with the other one, but it's my first attempt of really doing mittens, besides the tiny ones that I've done before, which I actually think are right beside me. But they did not come out very well. The little thumb holes are so small. She couldn't get a little tiny thumb in there. I followed the instructions, but I guess we have large hands in my family, so... That uh, seems to be something for me to keep in mind when making mittens. Alright, that's looking pretty nice, actually. I'm not going to complain, so we're going to keep... I'm going. And. Yeah, it's looking pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with this. Alright, let's keep going here. Out with the new? What? No. Out with the old, in with the new. That feels very consumery, but whatever. I'm just happy to get this one done and done. I like having my finished list or to do list become smaller and smaller. Because there's a few cross stitches that I'd really like to get to. There's a couple I don't think I'm actually going to do that I had started in my mind to do. Um, the thing is, I can take any of my diamond arts and turn them into a cross stitch. And there's at least two that I really would like to do as a cross stitch. I'm not sure what I want to do them on, but they just... I don't know. I mean, they're going to make really nice diamond art, but I, I kind of I kind of want to stitch them more than I want to diamond them. Yeah, diamond. <laughs> okay, so we're almost at a point where Okay, we are going to cross you over right Let's see, we're right at that point. Okay, so now we are going to go through here, right? Okay, so you can see that, probably. Go through here. Now I need to attach here to here through here 
because we want to make sure this part especially I found, I've always found was really a part where I'd end up with holes in all my mittens and my gloves. I always wear them out right in that little spot in my thumb. Now my guess is that a lot of people just don't really enforce them. But I mean, my brain goes to enforcing just because of the amigurumis I make, right? Gotta make sure that they're going to stand a little bit of a test of time. Oh, today my daughter brought me one of my first amigurumis I made, and it was a knitted one. And, yeah, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but I'm not exactly excited when I see it, because I'm just like, oh... I've come a long way, but sometimes I don't feel like I've come a lot enough. Oh, that's comfy. Okay, that is good. That is that is nice. That did not pull at all. That's what I wanted. I'm gonna use this one to secure this. Pull that out. We don't want it in there. And then we're going to stitch down this side. We have a cuff to add. And the cuff's kind of weird because they both ended up looking like they're slightly different, but they measure the same. Same amount of stitches, same length, but to my eye they look different. I don't know. I don't know if it's maybe the way the, the patterning is, but I'm sure it's going to be just fine. And if not, I can, I can fudge it. I have enough left that I can just add a little bit here or whatever. Whatever needs to be done to make it look somewhat even. But I mean, technically, nothing in nature is symmetrical. I'm trying to remind myself of that. Nobody's eyes are even in the same spot. And that was a problem with me for whenever I'm painting or doing art. I always really stress out about everything being exactly perfect and exactly the same, but that's not reality. And that makes me very hard on myself, and I think that transfers over to any of my crafts, especially if I'm creating any sort of character. Because somewhere in my mind, I feel like they're supposed to look absolutely perfect. And that's just not... Even how it is, like nature is beautiful, but it is flawed and it has little imperfections and little little bits of oddness to it, which makes it even be more beautiful. And I'm trying to remind myself that. Being a little more mindful and less cruel to myself, especially. Because I hold myself to such a weird standard of... And we're just going to do the simple twist through. Through and through, back and forth and back and forth. So I'm sure people are already starting to think about what they're going to be doing for their their uh, Valentine's projects. Not a clue over here what I want to do. Because Valentine's Day, unfortunately, is two days after my husband's birthday, and his birthday is a little more important. So, I don't know. I'll come up with something. My mom, one year, made little heart baskets and out of plastic canvas. And man, I really wish I had that pattern. I'd love to do that one for my daughters because they love those little baskets. I have a Easter Bunny one on my on my uh, dresser that I put a couple random odds and ends in from when I was like 11 that she made me, and I absolutely love it. One of my other favorites is she cross-stitched this bag 
and put some very uh, antique ribbons with it. And it's meant to hold the petals of flowers that your love has given you. And that is hanging up. My daughter decided one day to open up the back of it and try to see what was in there and got petals everywhere. I was like, your dad never buys me flowers. I don't want him to buy me flowers. That's why he doesn't buy me flowers. Let's clarify that, okay? I don't think that dead flowers are a good representation of feelings towards me. Please buy me a life plant that I can keep alive, so... That, that seems a little more my style. A little t surprise that he got me chocolates for my birthday. It was a Christmas. My birthday. That is not something I usually end up with or want. Really hoping for a new vacuum. But you know. That's just because my vacuum is just being so um, finicky. And we bought one off of Marketplace and I am not very happy. The lady scammed us and she knew the thing was not going to be a very good fit. And the smell, the smell that came out of that filter because I think she submerged it and let it, it rotted. So I've had to replace quite a few pieces on this thing and it's already costing me almost $300 for this silly thing. And it's, it's a Dyson. I really wanted a Dyson and I thought, oh, this is going to be awesome. No, no, no. This thing is so finicky. It shuts off constantly because the motor is overheating. And yes, I have changed out the filter. I bought two brand new ones. I have cleaned it properly. I had taken parts off to clean inside deeply with everything you can think of in all the safe ways. Manuals, YouTube videos, everything you can think of I have done. It doesn't smell like wet dog anymore when I turn it on, which is fantastic. But it definitely does not like to pick up some things. Like it'll pick up the most amazing amount of fine dirt and dust but it won't pick up a crumb i don't care i just want a regular vacuum that just vacuums i mean i could keep the dyson for when i really 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 need to get a lot of dust up and then maybe it'll last better i don't know this one's and it didn't come with attachments and i've been looking at the price of getting the attachments and i really don't want to pay another almost 200 dollars for that to get a funnel piece to get in the corners and that kind of thing. Like, it just seems a little bit much. And, of course, mine, my luck, replacement uh, pieces are quite expensive because it is a discontinued model. So even when I buy them off-brand or anything like that, they are a bit tricky to find. The exact one, I have to guess... Because my exact one is almost impossible to find what I need for it. I can find all the models around it. But that one in particular was like, nah, you don't need anything for it. So, it's just been a big headache. And I do enjoy a nice vacuum. I love my carpets being nice and clean. Which is why I talk about having to steam clean them soon enough to freshen them up and get some of that dusty smell out because we're getting there. Yeah. It's gross. I do not like it. All right, let's see here. Test the time here. This is inside out, but keep in mind because I need to tuck a few more. Oh, that's, that's exactly what I was going for. This is good. This is good. Bom, 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 bom. Loosen that up. She said that the size I made it was really comfortable and totally fine because I've been sizing it on her hand. She does. My mom does know I'm making this because I made it this way after Christmas now. Oh yeah. I need the bigger ones for this. Don't you dare start coming out. I pulled a little too tight there. I don't like that. 
Okay, let's see. There better not be a hole. Better not be a hole. That would be very tragic. Okay. So these are my hodgepodge mittens that I mostly took inspiration from a few different sources and kind of went with it. Like quite a few of my projects. I'm not there to design and I'm definitely not going to take any recognition that I these are my designs. No way, I just borrowed a couple ideas from some very talented people that have already made it up designs. And I mixed them to make a Frankenstein of my very own. Because I'm notorious for that kind of thing in all my crafting. There we go. Now I'm going to go through. Okay, no, don't fall out. Couple more here. I want to make sure that this spot is nice. Go through and we go up into this row. There we go. Then I'm going to come back down and through. Because I want to make it impossible to take apart, which is. Sadly, what I've done to myself a few times and ended up not being able to undo my own work. And that's okay, because that means that it's not going to come apart on its own. So I'm pretty sure she washes this. This is going to felt up really nice. I think that's going to look really cute. I think it's going to felt up super nice and the colors really go well together. Might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it is definitely. I felt you in. Bum, bum, bum. Can't find you. Right. On to the last part. This is just going to fit around here. So I'm going to. Holy. That was crazy. Just starts. Tipping over for no reason. Everybody alright? I think we're okay. Hmm. Apparently my building is built over top of a stream. So sometimes we get weird vibrations in our building. There's a couple spots in my living room. When you're sitting on the couch, it just vibrates like crazy and... It, nothing's going on. There's like no trucks going by. There's nothing that should be vibrating it. It just does. Really weird. But when we have a little bit of flooding and stuff like that, sometimes the parkade downstairs will flood. So we get the smell of stale. stale. They do pretty good with trying to make sure that it gets cleaned up right away and that kind of thing. It was kind of a weird spot to build a building, I gotta say. I wouldn't have put it over a stream. I would have wanted around it. No, I mean, I'd probably use it as part of the architecture, though. That's kind of like... I think that'd be cool. I also really like hopped houses, so I'm kind of biased that way, where, you know, put some nature into your buildings and You'd be surprised how pretty that is. Okay, and that one is Indo. There we are. Nice and stretched out. And we're going to put you through so then I'm sure that everybody is nicely secured. I'm going to go around this way. And we are going to go up through here. And I'm going to come back down through there. Because I feel like this part was just a little bit indented. So I'm going to build it up just a tiny bit. 
and then tuck this in. And that should be easy peasy to get together. So I know this is not a very exciting video watching me trying to piece things together. I'm not the best sewer. But I also refuse to give up and I hope you don't give up on yourself and your projects. If it's not working for you the traditional way, figure out what's going to work for you. Because I mean seriously, this is not traditional, but it is working. And that's what I wanted. Alright, so we are together. Together forever. Now, pop that back into my nice little... <laughs> must use my old yarn. My yarn scraps for something, right? Okay, we're going to pop you in. This is your side seam. I want the side seam there. And let's see, how did I do this last time? I did it like this, but I did it with with the slip stitch, and I didn't really like how it worked out. Um, I don't think you're really gonna be long enough, but we're gonna give you a whirl because I don't really want to have to. I'm gonna have to. Okay, I didn't finish my sentence there. I didn't want to have to use more. That's okay. We will roll with this. Okay, and let's see how we're doing here. Okay, now we are going to do a little knot. No one's going to see this knot. They're not going to notice it. It's not going to be... Okay, no, I wanted to go the other way. We want to go through... Here. Just to make sure that this knot is really in there. There we are. Now we're going to go this way. And this is not really going to be noticeable. This orange and that furry stuff really match up really nicely. I'm going to try to go in every stitch. I did quite a bit of cross stitching today and that was really nice because like I said after doing all that corner to corner this morning my hand was hurting in here and the red ice up up there it's just it's a little swollen in there so I gotta take it easy with the with the crochet when that happens it hasn't happened in a, quite a while but for some reason today it was just really strained and just uncomfortable, so I wasn't going to push my luck. I did did start my next panel on my color placement. I think I'm pretty happy with it. We're going with some pretty bold and deep colors in the background. And I think for my final one, I'm actually going to use my navy blue. But I think I might have to send someone to get a different navy blue because the one I have there is kind of fluffier and thicker and I don't really want to use it. So we will see how this all goes. And like magic, 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 magic. Almost done. Said, I'm going to be super happy that this one's done because this one has caused me so much heartache. And I absolutely love the colors. I do. 
I think they're very pretty. They're not ones I would wear myself, but I think they're gorgeous. I'm funny like that about color. I don't think there's very many colors that I don't like. Like even like pumice green, like that gorgeously awful green from bathrooms in the 70s and stuff like that. I could see it working in some really nice projects and actually being very fun with like a nice yellow. Possibly a pink, depending on the shade. And a bright orange. I know that sounds crazy, but I think it would actually make something very spectacular and make your eyes just go like, what is that? I'd really like to try that combo, actually. I might have to. I don't know what I'd make with it. Maybe a little pullover. A bag. Granny squares would be really cute in those colors, I think. Just, you know, try something different. Do something cool. And, you know, just make something your own. You know, the things. Alright, why are you sticking out? Well, that's not cool. We're gonna have to keep you in. I don't want hanging out. Alrighty, we're almost there at the end here. I've been procrastinating doing this for well over a week now. Because I just didn't want to pull out my needles. Which is ridiculous because they sit inside of this right beside my bed. Like for real. They're always available to me. I don't hide them. I don't put them away anywhere crazy. I do have the original casing that they came in. And sometimes I... I mean, I take the other ones in there, the ones I actually have been using that aren't brand new and fresh. Next time I go get some supplies, I'm probably going to have to get myself some more cross-stitching needles. I have DMC ones and I find them to be a little bit smaller than I'd like. I'd like something a little longer. But then again, I don't want it longer. I don't know. I'd like a variety, I guess. And I don't know, the ones I got at the dollar store, they work. But they are so thin that I can't... The eye hole on them is so thin I can't put a few strands in at once. So depending on what I'm making... It's not working out for me. Now the two, the two main diamond arts I want to do as cross stitch ones a rainbow baby dragon. I absolutely have been just drawn to that picture. I had to have that one. And the other one I want to do is the skeleton unicorn. That one I had to order three times now. Once for my aunt and twice well, no, twice for my aunt, because the first one got lost in the mail. Uh, that was crazy. I've never had anything go missing in the mail. Whoever got it, I hope you're enjoying it, because it's a cool picture. It really is. Very, very interesting details, like bats in the background and that kind of thing. And I kind of really would like to... I like the diamond art, but I think that I could do... I think I really could do it some justice with uh, cross-stitch. I don't know. I may be having to pull that out. There's a lot of grays and creams and whites and blacks and the eyes are red. And I mean, I could adjust a few things. No problem. Yeah, here we go again. I'm adjusting stuff. But I think I'd really like to do that one for myself. But bigger than the diamond art. Because the diamond art is a 30 by 40, and that's only size I could find it in. Which is not a... I like that size. I don't mind that size at all, but it's just 30 by 40 centimeters, inches, something like that. And let's see here. Dear Grace, I'm trying these on, showing these off just for you, dear. 
Okay. Come on. Okay, so this is a little tricky to turn the other way. Oh, what? Never mind. Well, look what I found here. This is not what I wanted. We want this done. Weaving in my ends, weaving in my ends. Make sure that my crochet stays together. And that's my weaving in the end song. Thank you. I'll be here all week. No, really, I will be here all week. School's back. I got things to get through. I'm sorting through toys because we have way too many again. Now, that's the bane of Christmas, just adding and adding and adding. And I don't have more space, so... And... Leave the nose ends. Beautiful. This is looking pretty darn good. I'm really happy with how this have turned out, actually. I didn't think they were going to come out nicely. And, surprisingly, I am actually very, very pleased. And boom. Just like that. We are... Finally done. I'm just going to cut these off. I'm not going to weave in all the ends that way because I think there's enough in there now. There we go. All right. We are the proud owners of a gorgeous pair of mittens. Let's put them on. Are they perfect? No. Are they warm? Yes. Do they fit? Yes. Pretty much the same size. Almost totally perfect. Really happy with how these turned out. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you my first pair of mittens. These are some monstrosities that you cannot. She could not get her finger in there. It should be big enough, but it was not the right size for her. These are made with Hobie's Carnival. Can't remember which city. They were very pretty. And then compare them to the wristlets my mom made around the same time. Let's just say time and practice really can make a big difference. All right, and now my color choices for my Donatello. I'm using this gorgeous, gorgeous burgundy as my background. And we're having this dark green, this purple, and this is such a really stunning color combo that I think this is gonna come out really nice. And they're all gonna match up, it's gonna be great. I'm so excited to get this thing on the go. So thanks for joining me here at All the Crackers in the Box, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye!